Greetings viewers, if you click the video link, you're here to learn about Frog Lube. So, I have been using Frog Lube ever since it came out. I gave it a shot when I heard about it, and I've been very impressed with it. I'm not sponsored by them, I'm not paid by them to say it, I didn't get any of this stuff for free, I've purchased everything with my own money. But again, when I find something that works and that I like, I like to kind of put the word out about it. And all the people that I've turned on to it and suggested uh, that they use it, they've all been happy with it as well and continued kind of down the line with that word of mouth, uh, passing it along. Perhaps you have your own experience with it, whether it's good or bad. Go ahead and let me know down below what you think. Again, this is just my personal opinion. I like it, it works for me. So what is it? Well, it is a weapon cleaning product that is a little bit unconventional in terms of uh, initial application, which I'm gonna go over in this video, but it is a non-toxic, all green, all natural product. The guys that came up with it when they go around doing shows and stuff, they'll put the paste version of this on a toothbrush and brush their teeth with it to show people that it's not harmful. I know that you cannot do that with any kind of bore cleaner, WD-40, whatever uh, petroleum or oil-based products that you may use to clean your firearms or have used. This stuff does is not have any sort of harmful vapors. It doesn't stain anything if you get it on uh, something like you're cleaning on the kitchen table and you get stuff on the placemats or something and your wife's screaming at you that now you got oil stains on it from whatever you were cleaning with. This will not do that. It does not have a nasty smell. It actually has a uh, pleasant minty smell to it. And again, it's all green, non-toxic, no issues. It's not corrosive or anything, so you don't have to worry about it getting on stuff that it shouldn't get on. You don't have to worry about it being on plastic or wood or metal. Anything that you put it on is gonna be fine. It's not gonna discolor or change anything. Now, why did I say it's a little bit different or unconventional, especially for the first time that you're using it on a weapon? Well, unfortunately, Frog Lube does not interact well with petroleum-based products. Personally, I do not know exactly what happens when they come in contact with each other. I have not done that test. Maybe I need to in the future to get that answer for myself. They do recommend that you do not mix the product. So the particular weapon that I'm about to clean today is brand new from the factory and it is absolutely disgusting and coated with oil, which we need to take off. So that's why I have this isopropyl alcohol here. This is 91% from Sam's Club, it is a, a big jug and it's almost empty because I've used it quite a bit doing this same process on multiple weapons. You wanna get the highest concentration percent isopropyl alcohol that you can get. If you get the watered down stuff, it's, uh, it's not gonna do as well to get rid of the petroleum and grease and oil off of these parts which is what we have to do for the very first step. So again, this weapon is brand new, never been fired, but we have to get the factory oil off before we can do anything else and before we can even touch this stuff. So I'm gonna set this aside. And so typically what I'll do is I'll just get some sort of little Tupperware container that I, again, have used multiple times for this and I'll gather up all my parts. So I've already disassembled this weapon and you're gonna see that in upcoming videos. So I'm just gonna take all my parts. And again, these are all completely greasy, covered with uh, factory oil. So I'm gonna put everything that I've got that will fit in here. So doing it this way with all your smaller parts makes it so much easier than trying to manually do it. Now, unfortunately, like this barrel, this uh, chamber section here is completely coated. And I, if I, I can't set this down in there, so I'm gonna have to do it that way. And then the bolt for this weapon as well, completely gross and coated. I'll probably set it in here and pour it over there. And what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna pour alcohol all over all of these parts. Again, it's not gonna harm anything, it's all metal, but we just need to get as much alcohol in here as possible. Kind of like myself on a Friday night, except we're talking about weapons and uh, alcohol that you probably don't wanna drink, or at least I would not recommend it. Isopropyl alcohol is not for consumption, so do not do it. So anyway, what we need to do is we need to saturate all these parts with the, uh, the alcohol. We need to get them cleaned off. Usually what I will use is these, uh, they're actually makeup remover pads, but they come in these real big packs so you can get quite a few of them and they work great. And so what I'll do is I will just get one and I will completely coat it in alcohol. If you have cuts on your fingers, this is probably not gonna feel very good. And if you didn't know you had cuts on your fingers, you will find out real quick. So. I will just take the individual parts and use the makeup remover pad and just start cleaning them the best that you can. Get all of the oil and grease and factory gunk off of these parts. The alcohol will dry, so you don't need to really worry about uh, drying these parts off. We just set them aside and uh, they'll air dry and the shirt that I'm setting them on will help soak some of that up. So again, I am just gonna go through all of these parts and I am just gonna wipe them down the best that I can and clean every single little nook and cranny of every part possible. So once I'm done with this bucket, we'll come back and uh, I'll show you guys the next step. All right, so I have thoroughly cleaned absolutely everything that I possibly can on this weapon with the alcohol. Some of the parts are still drying, so we're gonna let it finish doing that, but we're gonna go ahead and jump into talking about the next part. Before I forget to mention it, cleaning stuff with alcohol, depending on your firearm, and I can specifically recall 
doing the same procedure with an Arsenal SAM 7 SF AK. Cleaning the gas tube portion of it, apparently uh, that is painted with some sort of barbecue grill paint or other such product. And as I was using the alcohol, it just completely stripped all that paint off and my gas tube went from being black to splotchy black and silver. So keep in mind, depending on the manufacturer and quality of the finish or paint on your weapon. So the alcohol, if you have some kind of Cerakote or Duracote or something on your weapon or a colored portion of plastic on the weapon, the alcohol will not mess with it. It's going to, again, depend on some sort of coating or paint that may be on your product. So if, you, if you're buying high quality weapons, you, uh, you probably don't have to worry about that. But just beware that some of that can happen. You can get some discoloration. If you look at these screws, the finish that's on there started kind of coming off, so it's this weird grayish color, but I'm not really worried about it. I'm not gonna see it anyway. It's not ruining the integrity of the metal. And once we uh, get some frog lube and on this thing, it'll be right as rain. So I didn't mention it that this also is a rust preventative. So it does come in two forms. We have liquid, which is in this little spray bottle here, and a paste form in this little tub. And what we're gonna use first is we're gonna use the paste, and we're gonna get it on these weapon parts. However, before we do that, so basically the way this stuff works is you have to season the parts, if you will, kind of like you would season a cast iron pan or other such cooking instrument. And in order to do that, we're going to need to heat these parts up. Well, obviously, we're not going to fire the gun and heat it up while we're doing this. So typically what I will use is a hair dryer or a heat gun. Either one of these will work. I do not recommend using a torch or something with a flame to heat these parts. I mean, I guess that would be one good way to get rid of all the alcohol and or petroleum products on it, but I would not recommend that. It is not safe at all. Use a heat gun, use a hair dryer, and just crank it up. And all we need to do is we need to, typically I'll just do it one single part at a time. So let's say I'm starting with my firing pin, and I'll just get the heat blowing on this thing, kind of move it around. Eventually it's going to be hot to the touch. You're not going to be able to pick this thing up and hold it. And that's what we need is we need this thing piping hot, and then we are gonna apply paste to it. And we are just gonna put paste all over this whole thing. Usually what I'll do is I have a small paintbrush that I'll use, especially for these smaller parts, and I'll get some paste on there and just glob it on. And I want this whole thing coated in paste while it's nice and hot. And then again, just like the alcohol, we're gonna set it aside and we're gonna let it dry. And with all that, what happens with this is the heat kind of opens up the pores in the metal. And then when we apply the frog lube paste to the part, it soaks into those pores, and then as the metal cools and, it, and it, uh, those pores shrink down, it, the metal is now embedded basically with frog lube. So the next time you shoot this weapon and those parts start to heat up again, what will happen is that frog lube will actually start to come back out, and it kind of creates a, a little layer on the outside that all that carbon and gunk sticks to. And typically what I'll do is I'll just use like one of these old shirts. These are my gun cleaning rags. I'll pull the bolt out of my AR, separate it, get my parts, I'll, and I'll just wipe it. And all of the gunk and grossness will come right off. And you can look at it, and you're not going to find anything except maybe uh, some carbon that needs to be scraped off that's kind of baked on there. But other than that, all the gunk and everything will just generally wipe off of every single part that you have. I'll clean it all off like that, and then I'll just put another little light layer of paste back on everything, reassemble it, and I'm done. You don't have to do this alcohol cleaning procedure but one time and the whole heating up and uh, treating everything. So let's go ahead and get some of these parts treated. I'll show you that process and then we'll set them aside to uh, dry. All right, so typically what I will do, especially with these smaller pieces, is I'll do them in batches. Just because they're so small, I'm able to kind of concentrate the heat in this area and get all that done at one time. And again, I am going to be using the paste and then I just have my little paintbrush here. This container's getting quite low. I've been using this for uh, several years, actually, but you can see it's kind of a thick, uh, goopy consistency in there. It is a nice, bright green color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kick my heat gun on and we are just gonna apply heat to these pieces until they are hot to the touch and I don't wanna pick them up and hold them. If you can pick it up and hold it, it's not hot enough. So I'm just gonna start on low heat for now. It doesn't take much, especially with these smaller parts. I'll even just bunch them all together concentrate that heat a little bit. If you're a little bit impatient, you can crank the heat up a little bit. I just don't want to blow these parts around putting it on the uh, the higher setting. So then I'll just kind of roll them around. That gives me a chance to touch them and figure out if they're hot enough. Some parts like this piston piece here are a little bit thicker, so it may take some more heat than the uh, firing pin to get to the desired hotness. All right, so I do not want to hold that anymore. It is nice and hot. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my paintbrush I'm going to dip it down in there. I'm going to get a nice glob of uh, paste 
and I'm just going to run it over every inch of these pieces. And the reason I use the paintbrush is because it's hot. I don't want to hold it. It's not comfortable, and I really don't want to burn myself. So this gives me a way to uh, get precision and jam it down into some areas on some parts that may be a little harder to reach than others. So that is sufficiently coated. We're going to move on to the firing pin. Again, these smaller parts tend to roll around, so you may need to kind of hold them in place. You may need to find something else to help hold them. And again, we're just going to put a nice, healthy dose of this paste on every inch of these parts. It's probably unnecessary to do it to the screws, but since I uh, changed the look of them a little bit, I figure I can show them some love. All right, so all those little parts are done. I'm going to go ahead and just do the same thing with everything else that I took apart here. And uh, we're just going to heat everything up and then just slather this paste on there. And then we set the parts aside to dry. Once you do that, just go take a lunch break, watch some TV, do something. It's going to take a little bit, again, for these parts to cool down, soak up that frog lube, and then to let it dry and uh, cool off so that you can pick it up and actually handle it. So when I come back, all these pieces have, will have been coated and dried and we'll be ready to move on to the next step. All right, so all of my parts have had a chance to cool. They've had a chance to soak up all that frog lube goodness. Now, there was a couple things maybe I wasn't clear on, and I want to kind of uh, clarify a little bit. So the only thing that you have to do this process for are the metal parts. I did mention that this product is safe to use on wood, plastic, rubber parts. It's not going to stain. It's not going to melt or burn anything. But doing this process on any plastic or wood is not going to yield any results. This whole uh, stripping with the alcohol and heating it up and, and pasting it, is just strictly for the metal parts on your weapon. Or hopefully I made that clear, but if not, I wanted to uh, touch on that. Also, this is not the only way to do it. You don't need to only use isopropyl alcohol. You could theoretically use Dawn or some other degreasing agent that is your uh, preferred method. The whole point is just simply to get all the petroleum products off and out of the metal so that it doesn't interfere or interact with the frog lube at all. So. Again, heating it up, you could use a torch with a flame if you really want to. I would not recommend it just for the safety reasons, so don't do that. I would suggest using a hair dryer or heat gun. I'm sure somebody out there uses an oven or some sort of device that heats everything up all at once. You do not have to use the paste. You can use the liquid. If you did this process, you noticed that, uh, or you happen to notice while I was doing it, the parts, when they're super hot, that paste just instantly turns into liquid. It is the same formula minus whatever it is that causes it to be uh, that thicker consistency. So it really doesn't matter. If you just want to buy liquid instead of buying two different versions of this stuff, I prefer having both just because I use them for different applications. So anyway, now that our parts are nice and soaked with frog lube, they've had a chance to cool down so I can pick them up. It's time to reassemble our weapon that we have cleaned and seasoned these parts for. So the first thing I'm going to do is so this for example this part that has uh, again cooled there is a thick filmy layer of the frog lube on the outside and all I'm going to do is just grab another dirty gun rag t-shirt and I'm just going to wipe all this stuff off and I'm just going to completely clean it so that now when I touch it there's nothing on the outside now if I were to take my heat gun and start heating this product back up, you would notice that it would be moist again because like I said, that frog lube will actually start coming out of the metal. So I'm just gonna set this aside and what I'll do is I'll take all my parts that are done and just do the same thing and just clean them off and wipe all that, uh, that paste off. So it may not make much sense for this next step because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put more paste right back on it. The way I look at it, whatever chemical composition or whatever is inside of this stuff that's getting soaked up, I don't know that it's soaking up every part of it. So whatever's left on the surface may not be the complete product. It may be a portion of the total chemical compound that's used. So I clean all this off. Before I assemble my parts, what I will do is I'll just take my finger, dip it in there so that I get a nice little amount of frog lube on my finger. And then I will just go ahead because now again, these parts aren't hot and I will just go ahead and put a nice thin layer all over everything, especially parts like this. This is the piston for this particular weapon system, so it's going to get nice and gross. There is a little bit of carbon on here. I did not take the time to scrape that off, so you will get, again, baked on stuff, but it makes it a little bit easier. If I were to just get a brass brush, that would come right off, but if I know that that's a portion that's going to get disgusting and caked, I'm going to put a lot of uh, paste on there, and again, just 
put it all over this entire thing so that there's a nice layer. Now, keep in mind, I do this for guns and parts that are designed to be run wet. So this is fine that this inside the piston here has all this uh, paste on it. So for example, something like a Glock, I'm not going to coat the entire slide or the entire barrel in it. I'll just put it on the lockup points or the wear points on the weapon where you're supposed to oil them to begin with. And that's another time where the, uh, the little paintbrush comes in handy. So like the metal rails on a Glock slide that is interfacing with the metal slide going back and forth. I will just take a little glob of the paste and I'll just put it on those key points and then just leave it at that. So again, for something like an AR and you're with the bolt, I'll just completely put a nice filmy layer of this paste all over it as I assemble it and put all the pieces back together. So that's really it. Um, again, just finish assembling your weapon, get a, uh, and again, I, I'm not really worried about this. This is non-toxic, it's not corrosive, this isn't gonna hurt me. I just wash my hands with soap and water afterwards. They might smell a little minty, but uh, no major issues there. And my gun is clean. So after I've done this process, I reassemble my weapon, I go out and shoot it. So when I'm done and I disassemble it again, like I mentioned previously, all I'll do is just take a rag, I will wipe the parts off. Typically they will be completely clean, minus again, any portions of the weapon that have baked on carbon. Just scrape that off. I'll reapply a thin layer of the frog lube back onto it, reassemble it, and I'm ready to go. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you didn't know anything about frog lube before, and you, I highly recommend it. It's a one-stop shop cleaning product. I don't need seven different hazardous caustic chemicals that stink and stain everything and aren't okay to put on plastic or some wood products or you have to pay attention to which ones can go on what. This one goes on everything. It does it all. It smells good. It's not harmful. If your dogs or kids get it in their mouth, they're not going to get sick or you're not going to have to call poison control or anything. It's fine. Like I said, the, the results speak for themselves and I have used this product for many years and had absolutely zero issues. Hopefully you guys and girls found this video somewhat useful or educational. Let me know down below if you've had any experiences with frog lube, whether they're good or bad. I like to get other people's feedback on it, especially if I'm recommending a product. I don't wanna hear stories about a friend's, uncle's, neighbor's guy that used to walk his dog said he didn't like it. If you don't like it or there's something specifically wrong with it, I'd like to know, uh, I wouldn't mind having some details on what the exact issue is other than just saying it sucks. So anyway, with that, I am gonna call the video here. Hopefully you found something useful or educational in your gun cleaning endeavors. Hopefully if you uh, do decide to use this product, it makes your life easier and I am not recommending it in vain. So anyways, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next video.